guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am bringing you this super, super glam look. Right now, these kind of eye makeups are a huge trend again. When I worked at Elle Masca ages ago, when I first started my channel, I used to do makeups like this all the time. And then we kind of went through a phase where it was a little bit more natural, and then now it's coming back thanks to people like Mimi Mimi Mitchell and Stacey Marie MUA who are both amazing, amazing makeup artists. Everyone seems to be back on this hype. So I thought, you know, I'd join in, join on that bus, get on that bandwagon, do a cut crease for you guys. So I really hope you like this makeup look and if you would like to see how I created it, then please stay tuned. Hello, hello, hello. I'm just seeing if this works because I don't know. I never used a mic before. It's the sound better. Hello. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on my Kypress Heliotropic Sunscreen and Primer. I have loved this stuff for a long time. Look, I got a fresh one. I actually really rarely finish things as well. So I'm just going to do this and then we're going to rub that in. And when I use this, I just feel like my makeup really lasts, especially if I'm wearing quite a lot of it. It does actually work as a really nice primer. And I'm really excited to show you guys the skin on today's look. It worked really well. I wore it yesterday from about 9am till 10pm and it was flawless all day. So once that's rubbed in, I'm going to go in with my foundation. I am back on the Born This Way foundation from Too Faced. This is the shade Warm Beige. And I'm going to take one pump and then a wee bit. I'm just going to use a big domed brush just to apply that all over. I was pretty obsessed with the way that my skin looked and lasted all day yesterday. It worked really well. It was like a nice colour and stuff. It just matched really nicely. It covers up everything you want it to. It's just great. It's a really good foundation. It's been on the market for ages. I'm sure you guys have tried it out already. And I've got a little bit left on my hand, so I'm just going to start building that up a wee bit more. Now we're going to move into concealer. If you've been a part of the family for a while, you'll know that I used to use the Kevin Acon Skin Enhancer so much. I used to use it to go around my eyebrows mostly, but I got my real colour, so I've got SX11, and I'm going to conceal with it today. I'm actually going to add some coverage. I'm going to use it as an eyeshadow base. I did this yesterday. Oh my god, it was amazing. I'm going to go straight in with my foundation brush to pick up a little bit at a time, and I'm just going to pat that underneath my eyes. Not blended, you'll see see and this color is pretty like spot on for my skin color it's just a wee bit lighter but not much and I'm just gonna go people use it as a concealer right but it's everything you can use it as a concealer you can mix it with moisturizer to make a foundation you can apply it just sparingly by itself to do a lighter coverage it's just really versatile it's pretty well known because one pot lasts you forever because it's quite like it's quite a lot of product you get you get right to the bottom of this and see when i use that under my eyes oh my goodness i thought it was going to be too creamy but it just made my skin look super buttery and nice so if any of you guys have got this because of me we have another use for it now i'm going to go in with my concealer brush pick up a little bit and when i say a little bit i mean a little bit like tiny and I'm just going to dot that on my eyelid and we're going to buff that out. And this is going to be the base for our eyeshadow. And again, I thought it was going to be too creamy and it actually works so well. So it's quite nice being able to use one product for a few things. And I'm just going to add wee bits here and there just to build up that coverage. And then I'm going to use this brush to go up a little bit higher underneath my eye. But you can get a little bit more precision with a smaller brush. Now I'm going to go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the shade number 2. On my lid, powder that down before eye makeup. And then just the usual spot, so smile lines will do our forehead as well. Actually right, so I'm going to do just this little bit here as well. Next product is from the brand Nude Sticks. I've used these products a couple of times on my channel. This is beautiful. It's so nice. This is the Nudies stick in the shade Bondi Bay and it's basically like a contour stick but the colour is perfect. It's like the perfect ashy contour colour that warms up your face but doesn't make you orange. It's just great so I'm going to use that underneath my cheekbones, forehead. I like to just do a little kind of halo. 
Now I'm going to use my foundation brush just to blend that in. I feel like this just makes it a wee bit easier. There is a brush on the end of this but it's just a little bit too firm to use when you're doing it over foundation, I think. When you use this without foundation underneath, you can use the brush and it looks great, but this is just a little bit more careful for me. A little bit safer. Do you see that? Oh, perfect. Okay, so we have cream contoured. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that with a bronzer. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills bronzer in the shade Saddle. Just tried this for the first time yesterday and it looked insane. So good and it's a really nice matte bronzer as well. So I'm just gonna use this with my usual bronzer brush. With this product, just go in with a little bit at a time and it just helps set that cream contour and warm up your face at the same time. And then I like to just use the same bronzer down the side of my nose and then underneath and then on top just the tip. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of blusher. This is the California Blush by Benefit. Really nice little corally blush and I'm just going to take a little touch of that on my bronzer brush and then apply it just above the bronzer and then onto the apples of the cheeks a little bit. Why do I love blusher so much right now? It just it looks really sweet. And I didn't think I could ever look sweet. Do you understand? Time for highlighting. I'm going to go back to oldie but goodie. This is the Laura Geller Gilded Honey Baked Gelato Swirl Illuminator. It makes me hungry. Hit the top of the cheekbones, the nose, the lips, the brows, the face in general. And this highlighter is beautiful. Oh. Go above the brow can't believe how much I love highlighter. Do you know it's really weird? I was thinking the other day, at one point in my life, I didn't wear highlighter. Do you remember? I used to layer like, no eyebrows, no highlighter, big full face of foundation, no concealer. It was bad, it was bad time. I'm gonna take a smaller brush just to tin on this nose. We exclamation mark. Aw, boop, nice. And it just gives you that radiance in your skin. Even though the foundation's not super matte, it doesn't give that shine that I like. I love this skin, I can't believe it. This concealer is really scary at first. It's really full coverage, but once you kind of get used to using it, man, it's just the best. Skin's about finished. I am going to really quickly shoot off and do my brows off camera. And I'm just gonna use my Benefit Cabrow Pot and then my 24 hour brow setter, which this is the best brow gel in the flipping world. Try it, you will not be disappointed. But I'm gonna quickly shoot off because I know that the eye makeup's gonna take me quite a while and I don't want this tutorial to be a feature film. For blam. Let's move on to our keepers, okay? The palette I'm gonna use is the Anastasia Soft Glam palette, the new one. I have not used this yet. If you saw my subculture review, you'll know that I didn't like it at all. But I've heard that this palette is beautiful and it's the same formula as the Modern Renaissance palette, which is another one. I really like that palette. So hopefully, you know, we're gonna manage today. Let's see, let's zoom you in. You'll have to excuse me if the lighting is a bit off. It's really sunny outside today and I don't have any blinds. I don't have any curtains because this room is under construction. So if the lighting changes loads, I'm super sorry. It does look like a nice palette. Okay, let's start with burnt orange just here and let's use that in the crease. Yeah, that's lovely. Blend in really easy. I'm just doing my usual nice circular movements with my big fluffy brush. Bringing it onto the lid a little bit as well because we're obviously doing a cut crease. We need the product to be nice and low down. And then we're going to need to start building up this inner corner, but I'm going to do that with darker shades, I think. Okay, I'm going to go in with the little brush that comes with the palette. Let's try that out. And I'm going to go in with the colour Sienna, just right here. And we're going to just start patting that on and then giving it a little circular movement. I'm not gonna use this brush right now. This is too firm for me. I'm gonna use my Smith brush and I'm gonna go in with the Sienna color. A little round, see this is much better. Round movements and I'm gonna bring that color right in over the crease and then I'm gonna start building up that inner corner as well. Just gonna go back in with the first color and a bigger, fluffier brush. We're gonna try and blend this out a little bit. And then I'm gonna use my bigger, fluffier brush with the Sienna shade and see if that works. Okay, I'm gonna connect the middle of the spotlight because we need to get that bit quite dark. 
And again, I'm just going to go in with the fluffier brush and buff it out. There's quite a lot of this with this look. It just takes so long to get everything blending the way you want it to. I think the key is just to start with little amounts of product and then go in heavier as you kind of carry on. I'm going to go underneath my eye now with the shade Sienna again, just here. And we're just going to start to smoke that out a little bit. Pigment of these is pretty crazy, like a really, really pigmented. Like you can see, I just literally tapped it in the shadow. That is looking pretty nice. I'm going to try and intensify the outer corners and inner corner a little bit. So I'm going to go in with the shade Mulberry, just here. I want to keep it pretty ready toned today. Tiny amounts of product at a time. I'm going to go in with a little flat eyeshadow brush in the shade Mulberry and I'm going to use that to get the inner corner nice and precise. Oh, oh, oh. rhyme. Nice and precise. I'm really happy that this palette is the good formula and I'm just intensifying the crease again because the more intense you have this crease, the more your cut crease will pop. Now I'm back in with my fluffy brush to blend out all oh, good. I'm going to go back in with the shade Mulberry, this dark babe right here and we're going to go underneath the outer corner of the eye. Tiny bit of fallout, nothing too bad. When I use my own brushes, it's fine. I'm going to bring this on to the lid a little bit more. Cut crease time, and the one thing that I think is super important is the brush you use. I've been using different brushes for a little while, and yesterday I actually did this look, I practiced it, and this brush has changed the game for me. This is the Anastasia Concealer Brush. So it's number 18 brush. And see because it's just so flat and it's got a little bit of a rounded edge you can just place it on and cut and it's really really good so I'm going to take a light concealer just any light matte concealer that's got good pigment to it and you just pretty much saturate your brush in it don't be worried about using too much product it only really works properly when you do use quite a lot of product because it's going to be a middle like a spotlight cut crease we're going to start in the middle and then I might be quite quiet when I'm doing this, but I will promise that I'm going to keep the whole process in this video. So let's just do this. And then I like to just kind of look up and it stamps where you should do your crease to. It's fine for the moment. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blend the sides of the concealer into the eye makeup and then we'll see where we're at. You can see how that's starting to look somewhat better. And then it's just a lot of playing around and seeing if you think they're even or not. This is definitely not even. I can make it work. And then you can go in with your eyeshadow to kind of start blending the sides. And then if you need some help, a good tip is to go on your phone, go on a selfie, and then look straight at the camera and look down, take a picture, and then have a look. That's not that bad. Do you know what's crazy? I actually do think doing this on other people is easier than yourself. And if you're doing it all the time, it gets super easy. It gets really, really good. So if you really want to get good at doing these, the best advice is to just get up and do one every single day and you'll get so good at them. I am now going to set this little cut crease with the lightest shade in the Soft Glam palette and a flat brush. And these are pigmented so it should work. So you just mattify right to the cut crease and then over the concealer and I'm just going to use it to really highlight the middle. And then you can always go in with your concealer brush and just really, really sharpen it up. And I'm just going to go in with a burnt orange and we're going to tickle the side of this spotlight. And then Sienna, just right on the outside. I'm going to go in with this teeny brush, this is the Morphe M507 and I'm going to go in with the shade Mulberry here and a little trick to make your cut crease stand out a little bit more if you want is to go in with this brush and you just go along the edge of the cut crease and then what you can do is you can go back in with the concealer one more time to really sharpen it up and then again just make sure you set your concealer and see how much sharper that is? Pretty. To make it super extra, we're going to go in with the Stila Kitten Karma Magnificent Metals. I'm going to get that on the back of my hand. 
and I'm going to stipple this just down the center of the spotlight. So when you stipple it, it kind of goes on like a really fine, loose glitter wood. See, it gives a little bit of a shine. And then I'm going to go in with the concealer brush one last time, pick up some of this product, and we're going to cut the crease with the glitter. Now I need to wait for this to dry. And now if you can see that when I look straight ahead, you can still see the cut crease. It means that the glitter won't crease onto your shadow. Now I'm going to whack a wing on this look. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Because this makes my eyes look super round, I just want to elongate them a little bit. I got a replacement of my NYX Epic Ink Liner. This is probably my favourite liquid liner out there. And I'm just going to do some flicks just now. Now we've got our wing on, I'm going to pop on my Iconic London Boom Lash Mascara. And then I'm going to pop on my Farrah Lashes by Huda. Time to do the rest of our face. I cannot believe we managed that. Cut creases scare me more than shimmery eyeshadow. For our lips, I'm just going to go with something nude and simple because obviously the eye makeup is super loud. So I'm going to go with my Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheek Pencil, which needs sharpened. <laughs> this is one of my favourite lip pencils. It's just the perfect nude. And then I'm going to make my lips super pouty and full in the middle. Now I'm going to bring that on to the lip a little bit and then for lip product I'm going to use the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Gyro and it's really light so I'm just going to use it in the middle and then use my finger just to blend that in. Oh! I got a new freckle pen. Look, this is the Style Nanda Longwear Tattoo Eyebrow Marker in the shade Ash Brown and it's perfect for my little freckle and it's got a real point to it. It looks way more realistic. I'm going to do the little one underneath my eye too. Ta-da! So you guys, that is the finished look. I hope you really liked it. I always still struggle with some makeup techniques, but like I said, the more that you practice and the more that you just keep on doing it and trying out different colors and different techniques, maybe you'll find a technique that works better than mine. So I hope you like it. Let me know if there's any other kind of more creative style makeup tutorials that you'd like to see from me. And other than that, I will see you in the next video. Bye.